In 1989, Michael G. Moore proposed that meaningful interactions in a distance education course fall into three types. Students interacting with content or subject matter, students interacting with each other, and students interacting with an instructor or teacher. Furthermore, he encouraged instructors to plan for all three types of interaction in their courses. This video will discuss learners' interaction with the content or subject matter in an asynchronous online course. It includes some simple and practical techniques and tools for increasing this type of interaction that you can start adding to your course today. Moore wrote that student content interaction, quote, results in changes in the learner's understanding, the learner's perspective, or the cognitive structures of the learner's mind, end quote. Indeed, active engagement with content plays a key role in foundational educational theories including John Dewey's experiential learning theory, Jerome Bruner's constructivism, and John Seeley Brown's theory of cognitive apprenticeship. Quality Matters, a nonprofit organization whose mission is to promote and improve the quality of online education and student learning, includes as an essential standard in its rubric for online course design in higher education that courses provide interactions that support active learning. Quality Matters defines active learning as learning that, quote, involves learners engaging by doing something, end quote, as opposed to passive exposure to course content. This video will focus on two common types of content provided in an online course, videos and readings, as we explore several ways to encourage active engagement and interaction between students and content. We'll look at providing an advanced organizer, creating opportunities for self-assessment, and segmenting or breaking up long videos. First, let's discuss providing an, an advanced organizer. Advanced organizers are tools that introduce students to a lesson and prime them for learning. It can tell them what to look for and what they're about to experience and also give them a sense of how to relate their new material to what they already know. Instructors can provide an outline, or they could provide a graphical representation of content. You might provide this with a skeleton ideas already filled in and ask students to further organize what they learn from the video or reading. A related idea would be to ask students to organize the content themselves into a concept map that links the new information to what they already know. Another good way to encourage engagement with online course content is to provide ways for students to check their understanding or self-assess as they watch a video or read an article or chapter. Pre-assessments can help students know what to look for in the content. And then low-stakes quizzes after they've read the article or watched the video can help them check and solidify what they've learned. One last tip is to make sure that your instructional videos are not too long. Richard Mayer, the cognitive psychologist who developed a multimedia learning theory, recommends segmenting or chunking videos into digestible pieces, perhaps no more than 10 to 15 minutes long, so that learners can process the information in one piece before moving to the next. One tool that combines the opportunity for self-assessment as well as a way to segment or chunk or break up long videos is PlayPosit, a tool available within Moodle. With PlayPosit, you can make a video stop during a viewing and insert interactions at specified points. There are many possible interactions you can include from asking a simple multiple choice or true false question to opening up a discussion forum. One NC State professor in the Poole College of Management reports great satisfaction with PlayPosit, saying, PlayPosit has revolutionized my distance education courses and given them an interactivity as students watch my lecture and other videos that we simply did not have before. Regardless of how you plan for and encourage student content interaction, either through advanced organizers, self-assessments, or breaking up content into digestible chunks, Alignment with your module and course learning objectives is important for buy-in. Make sure that what you're asking to your students to do 
to watch or to read, in other words, their learning activities, helps them to achieve the learning objectives you stated in your course syllabus. Tell your students how their engagement with the material will help them achieve the learning outcomes of the course. For more tips on planning for interactions in your online course, watch the other videos in this series about student-student interaction and student-teacher interaction. And refer to this page for both works referenced in this video as well as sources of further information about this topic.